hated going to the mosque when he was a, a child, and, and he thinks how much he's changed now that he's lived in America, he never goes to mosques anymore. That's an obvious, an obvious dramatic example. You think of things like that in your groups, just scribble some down. Go on, five minutes. That's enough. I mean, I, I, I know that you won't have written um, a little story in that time, but that is the basis for a story. You get an idea. I mean, that by itself is the basis for a story. I'll just tell you two of the interesting things that I've heard. Um, I'm sure if I've gone to everybody, I'd have heard a lot of interesting ideas. Um, one was here. Um, somebody talking about going back to their own childhood somebody who's gone to live in Britain for years, travelled around, done many different things, changed as a person, grown up, and gone back to the um, place where he was born, and found that everything was the same. Everything appeared to be the same. It hadn't changed. Except, it all seemed much, much smaller. And again, that in itself, if you could find a way of structuring that into a short story, I think that in itself is the basis for a great story, because there's a tension there between the unchanging nature of the place that he came from and all the changes that have happened in his life. That, that contrast is very interesting. The fact that the place, although it's unchanged, seems small because this man has travelled in the larger world is a very interesting contrast as well. That's enough for a good short story. Um, and the other idea, very imaginative and a great one, is from these two girls here, is the Emperor Aurangzeb uh, gets out of his grave, <laughs> steps out of his grave and goes to visit his old palaces. He goes to visit the, the places where he had palaces. And what does he see there now? What does he see on the way? That's a great idea. That's a lovely idea. And that's, again, that's a very fertile one. Good, good question to ask yourself. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to come to that very soon. I'll come to that in a minute. Something like that. Okay. Number Number eight, which is closely connected to the previous couple, is character complexity. Although I said, although I said, remember that characters are in, you know, exist in contexts. Don't stereotype them. Don't, you know, don't say that the if the grandfather is from this generation, he has to be a traditionally religious person. The father has to be secular. The son has to be. Modernist religious. It, it, people always go against the grain. People are always self contradictory. You know, some people who are very religious also have days when they don't believe in God. Some people who are atheists also have days when they do believe in God. People are complex and complicated. 
and, and we always we surprise ourselves, you know, we sometimes find ourselves behaving in ways that we don't expect ourselves to behave in. So we have to know how characters work, but we also have to let them have the freedom to sometimes behave in strange or uncharacteristic ways. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, who you probably know, the great writer who wrote The Great Gatsby and other Tender is the Night and other novels, he said, plot is character. I can never remember if he said character is plot or plot is character. I think it's plot is character. Plot is character. In other words, the plot, the story, arises from the character. The pl plot basically is about a character, a simple plot is about a character changing in some way or learning something or realizing something. That's a story. That, that will give you a plot. Um, characters, usually, these are just rules and rules are always made to be broken. The characters usually must be developed through the story. The character at the end of the story is not the same person as the character at the beginning of the story. And if you look at your own lives, you can see how that works. You can say that when I came back from studying in Britain, I was not the same person that I was before I went there. Yes? After I got married, I was not the same person that I was before I got married. You change. Your experience changes you. That's what life on earth is about. It's about having experiences and changing, not necessarily for the better, but changing, developing, becoming different. <coughs> Sorry, first this. The character is on two journeys. An internal journey and an external journey. Now the external journey is, if you like, plot stuff. The external journey is um, he gets married or he gets he kills somebody and feels guilty and is sent to prison or he has to find the answer to a question so he goes looking for it. Yes? Or he has to find out who killed his friend. This is the external journey that the character is on. The internal journey is what happens to his soul. What happens to his heart while the external events are going on? Both of these things are very important, the internal and the external. So you have to think about that when you're dealing with your characters. And next, we talked about development, change. The change of a character is what a story is all about. Therefore, you can plot your story according to key moments of change in the character's life. I keep giving the religion example, so I'll give it yet again. Let's say you want to write a story about a man or a woman who begins the story not being religious and ends the story being religious. Now, how does the character get from A to B? How does the character get from the first situation to the end situation? There must be key moments in the character's life. Yeah? Maybe his mother dies. Maybe that's one of the first key moments. His mother dies. And he asks himself, is this all there is in the world? He goes through it, he's feeling anguish, and he asks himself some deep questions. And then maybe the second moment is when he meets somebody who talks to him about religion and begins to answer some of his questions. And then the third moment may be he's walking past the mosque and he suddenly has an impulse to go in and he finds himself praying and he finds himself crying because this feels so right. Yes? Now I've just made that up, but there's three moments. The death of the mother, the conversation with the important influential person, and the, the religious or spiritual experience when he goes into the mosque and finds himself praying. That's about religion, but it could be about anything. It's any character change. How does the change happen? 
What are the key moments or events which change this person? James Joyce, who I mentioned early, earlier, he calls those moments epiphanies, a moment of realization, a moment of inner change. Something happens, something is realized, your perspective changes, you see the world in a different way, you see yourself in a different way, you learn something. That moment is an epiphany, and those epiphanal moments can be the key moments or episodes in a story or a novel. Where am I now? Uh, nine. Nine. Oh no, this is still connected to character eight. It's such a big thing. Yes. Whenever there is a conflict, 
So do that. Maybe even write about your own experiences privately. You don't have to show it to anybody. But if you write about your own family arguments and so on, from the perspective of different people, from your perspective and from your dad's perspective. It's a inter very interesting experiment. And this point goes on from what I was just saying. Remember that the novel, the novel is a, in inverted commas, is a democratic form. Now what do I mean by that? Does anybody know what I mean by that? about kings and sultans and princes and princesses, aristocrats, important people, or noble people, or heroes, or great warriors, or this was the traditional stuff. The novel writes about ordinary people and all kinds of people. It focuses, it has lots of different voices in it. Some people think that the novel is something which arises in a society when that society develops big cities, which may or may not be true. But certainly in the history of the English novel, it has been closely connected with urbanism, with lots of people living together in a big city. Rich people, poor people, people from all kinds of different backgrounds, from different parts of the country, all meeting each other in a city. And the novel is a form which gives voices to lots of different perspectives. You know, lots of different people, lots of different social backgrounds. It's democratic. You have to allow your characters to see from their own perspective. And that means that you have to be able to see from different perspectives. That means that if, for example, I'm writing a novel about London, and I'm writing about racism in London, I don't like racism. My son suffers racism quite a lot. It upsets me. But if I'm writing a novel about racism, I have to understand how the racist works. I have to understand what's going on in his mind. He doesn't think he's a bad person. He thinks he's a good person. You know? Hitler thought he was a good person. Ariel Sharon thought he was a good person. They always think that they're a good person. They don't think, I'm going to be evil today. They, they think they're doing the right thing. So you, you have to be able to see from those perspectives, even the perspectives that you personally don't agree with and don't like. An example is Tolstoy. Have you read Anna Karenina by Tolstoy? It's a great, great, great novel. You, you know, War and Peace also you should read. Great novel. Um, Tolstoy was a very religious man. Um, in some ways he was very radical, and in some ways he was very conservative. Anna Karenina is a story about an adulterous woman. It's a story about a woman who has an affair with a man who isn't her husband. And as a result, her marriage collapses and her life goes wrong and she ends up killing herself. She ends up throwing herself in front of a, a train. Now, Tolstoy, when he set out, he wanted to write a straightforward moral story about how wrong it is to be an adulterous woman. He wanted to write about families are important, loyalty is important, and it's wrong to follow your desires and do these bad things. But the book became much more complicated than that, despite him. You know, because he was such a great novelist, he couldn't help but feel what Anna, his character, feels. He couldn't help but think in the way that she thinks. And therefore, when you read the book, it doesn't make you think that adultery is a good idea, it's a very sad story. 
but you do have a lot of sympathy for this character, even though she's doing something wrong, even though she's doing something which Tolstoy, the author, thought was a terrible sin. Still, you love this character. He's made her human. This is the democracy of the novel. You see from everybody's point of view. Um, another final example is, is do you know Nadim Aslan? Who's a Pakistani or British Pakistani writer, and he wrote a book called Maps for Lost Lovers. And he's not here, so I can talk about it. <laughs> I, I, have, I have mixed feelings about this novel. On the one hand, I think it's a deeply unfair novel. It's a novel that he wrote, you should read it, it's worth reading, it's interesting. He, he wrote it about a British Pakistani community, or a British South Asian community, Pakistanis and Indians and so on, living in an industrial town in the north of England. And the people have a miserable life and they're surrounded, they live in a miserable place and they're surrounded by racism and economic problems. But worst of all, the people themselves are doing bad things. And I think it's an unfair novel because I think Nadine really just gives all the bad stereotypes of British Pakistanis. You know, they're, they're, there's honor killing and there's, there's, there's people beating their wives and there's a woman who's been divorced for a silly reason and there's, there's, there's people beating people because they're trying to get gin out of them, and all these horrible behaviour, nasty, cruel behaviours, family problems and so on. And I think it's unfair because Nadim doesn't show any character who is nice, <laughs> you know, he doesn't show any character. And it really gives the impression that all of these British Pakistanis spend their whole time killing each other and hitting each other and hating each other and being superstitious. And I, don't, I think it's a deeply unfair book. Politically, I don't agree with it. I think it's a... In that sense, it's a bad book. However, I must admit that Nadine has real skill as a writer, and that saves the book, because even when the characters are doing horrible things, you have some sympathy for them. You understand them to an extent as human beings. You can see why they think it's a good idea to do what they're doing. And that's what rescues the book from being bad propaganda or self-hatred and makes it actually a novel. So even though I politically don't like the book, I recognize that it's a good novel because he is able to feel with his characters even when they're doing bad things and to make me sympathize with them even when they're doing bad things. It's invoking empathy, which comes from common, empathy is common feeling with somebody. You know, this person is suffering, and I understand their suffering. I understand it because I share it to an extent. I know what's going through their mind. In order to generate empathy, you have to understand the thought process of this character. Yes? Um, I have a question. Your first point about why you don't like novel was that you felt that it was just um, depicting people as bad. But does there need to 